The Lord led me to 1 Corinthians while I was in the middle of prayer. He had me pull this up, and I don't know why it struck me so hard, but it did. Um, so this is 1 Corinthians, starting at chapter 1. I'm just going to read the whole thing. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and knowledge even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you. This is Apostle Paul, and he's speaking to the church of Corinth. He goes on to say in verse 7, So that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to hang on to every verse next. Who will sustain you to the end guiltless as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son you were called into fellowship with his son you were called into fellowship with jesus christ you weren't just called to say a simple prayer be saved know you're going to heaven and that's the end of it you were called into fellowship with the son of god with the lamb of god with the blessed messiah with your savior with your lord with god you were called into fellowship this means you need to have constant and consistent interaction and relationship with the Lord. And if you think that sounds impossible, I'm here to tell you it's far from it. Actually, God would love to talk with you. God would love for you to just sit in his presence and soak up his presence where you can find fullness of joy and rest for your soul. Divisions in the church. Verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there be no divisions among you. How many of us know that there are plenty of divisions in the body of Christ? But here is Apostle Paul saying this should not be. There should not be divisions among you. He said, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same judgment. We all have the mind in Christ, of Christ if we are, in fact, his sons and his daughters, children of God. We have the mind of Christ. We have the same mind. We are part of the same body, members of the same body with Christ as the head. So why is there so much division? And why are we entertaining those who are causing it? Why are we allowing them to take us out of character? I want you to think about that for a minute. You be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you. I want you to keep in mind that there is nothing new under the sun. There was quarreling among the body back then when Apostle Paul was roaming the earth. And there is quarreling among the body right now. But we are not to keep company with such people. We are to pray for them and keep it moving. I'm going to say that again. We are to pray for them and keep it moving because anybody who is causing division in the body of Christ, who is causing strife and contention is not operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. They are not operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is He's the God of reconciliation, not the God of division. Amen. So he says to them, it's been reported to me that there's quarreling among you and this should not 
be my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Well, is Christ divided? You see, a lot of times we identify with the church that we're a part of. I follow this pastor or that pastor. Actually, no, you follow Jesus Christ. That pastor is a shepherd. Okay? And all of it is supposed to lead you back to the cross. To lead you back to the lover of your soul. To lead you back to the one that Jesus died and resurrected to reconcile you back to himself, God. Jesus is God in the flesh. Amen? Is Christ divided? That was never how it was supposed to be. So you don't follow your pastor. You can honor, you can honor your pastor to a point. You can appreciate what they teach you. But at the end of the day, you need to remember that it's not so-and-so's church. It's Christ's church. If, in fact, the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the Spirit of God is moving in that church. However, we do have many churches in the United States and all around the world right now that are not moving in power. In fact, they are lifeless and dead. And you know it, the minute that you walk in, you see that the spirit is not moving in this church. How do we know that? Well, a lot of times it's because it's predictable. It's routine. It's the same day in and day out. God is not stagnant. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but he does a new thing all the time. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Now don't you see it spring forth? He's always doing a new thing because new seasons call for new movements. So if the church is doing the same thing that it did 10 and 15 years ago, Houston, we have a problem. We have a problem. Now, if that church is moving in power and they are led by the spirit, then they're going to let the spirit of God move that service the way that he wants it moved. And so maybe they worship the whole time because that particular day God is calling for them to worship. Maybe they spend time in corporate prayer for the things that are happening around the world. This is when you know the spirit of God is moving amongst you. This is when you know that people are being led by the spirit, the Holy Spirit that is, and not a different spirit. Different spirits are what cause division. Different spirits are what cause contention. Different spirits are what cause strife among the body of Christ. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius so that no one may say that you are baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I do not know whether I had baptized anyone else, for God did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. I love this next part. I want you to really pay close attention and not with words of eloquent wisdom. Now, this verse right here is not referring to godly wisdom. Eloquent, worldly wisdom, eloquent, fleshly wisdom, eloquent, carnal wisdom. We've got a lot of really good orators in the body of Christ, but there's some people who are really good on a mic. They know just what to say. They have charisma. They can hold the attention of their audience. However, there's no power there. That's when we have a problem. Not with words.